But why green? Why not blue? Or red? One of the most captivating characters to appear in House of the Dragon is undoubtedly Alice Rivers. Alice is the supposed illegitimate daughter of Lord Lionel Strong, the former hand to King Viserys, and father of Harwin and Larys. Alice remained at the seat of House Strong, the massive and haunted castle of Heron Hall in the Riverlands, while the rest of her family moved to King's Landing to serve the ruling Targaryens in various roles, whether as hand to the king, sworn protector to the Princess of Dragonstone and father of her children, or master of whispers and confidant to Queen Alicent. The Strongs keep themselves very close to the most important people in the realm leading up to the Dance of the Dragons, while their mysterious half-sister Alice serves at Harrenhal as a wet nurse and healer. Alice is said to be at least 40 years old at the start of the dance, though she looked far younger than her years. Mushroom even suggests that she was far older than that and had served as a wet nurse to Harwin and Larys, and even to their father, Lionel. She had nursed all of the children at Harrenhal, though Alice never had children of her own, only delivering stillborn babies. Stop drinking milk, Anthony! It's literally straight up milk. You don't even put anything in it. You don't even put anything in it. Like cookies. You don't even put anything in it. You or, don't even put strawberry stuff or chocolate stuff. While the book Fire and Blood is limited in details about the history of House Strong, the series House of the Dragon offers more information on this noble family who served close to the crown throughout the story. We were even shown their house sigil, modified for the series, which contains a hidden secret about their family history. How strong are a noble family from the Riverlands, whose ancient lineage reaches back to the First Men. They have upheld the Targaryens loyally since Aegon's conquest, even serving as Hand of the King to Aegon the Conqueror. The Strongs were eventually gifted the largest castle in the realm, Harrenhal, located on the mystical shores of a lake called the God's Eye, which holds the mysterious Isle of Faces, where the pact between the Children of the Forest and the First Men was created. Prior to receiving Harrenhal in 73 AC, the home of the Strongs is unknown, lost to time, or deliberately left out of the annals of history, which is strange considering their lineage stretches back to the earliest parts of the history of men in Westeros, or not so strange, since we know that the history is written by the Maesters and Septons. Early on in the Dance of the Dragons, Sir Harwin is dismissed from his position as captain of the City Watch for fighting with Sir Criston Cole, and his father decides he should return home to Harrenhal to take up duties as Lord of the Castle. His father escorts him back to their home, but the men are killed in a fire that breaks out during the night. While Fire and Blood suggests several opportunists to be the source of the fire, House of the Dragon confirms that it was none other than Larys Strong who arranged for the fire to occur. He released several men from the black cells of the Red Keep, the lowest levels of the dungeons, so long as they swear obeisance to him. The men wear a small brooch in the design of a firefly, which matches the cane that Lord Larys uses to assist him with his own malformed foot. The band of men remain at Heron Hall after the fire, hiding away in some hidden space in the ruined and massive castle. You've heard the stories of Heron Hall, Your Grace. It's built in hubris by Heron the Black as a monument to his own greatness. Blood mixed into the mortar. Larys Strong is an enigma of a man whose actions have vexed students of history in Westeros for generations, but we may begin to unravel those decisions here. He wove his way through the Dance of the Dragons, loyal to this side or that side, even betraying his own family. He appears to be loyal to Queen Alicent for a certain price. However, their arrangement is not exclusive, and he's willing to serve others, such as Otto Hightower, when he chooses. Clearly, his characterization is inspired by Varys and Littlefinger, a loyal servant of the realm, who finds that chaos is a ladder. While his father and brother serve the Targaryens, Larys seems to side with the Greens and Queen Alicent. However, questions arise of his true loyalty by the end of the war. Queen Alicent's children, Aegon, Helena, and Aemond, are at the forefront of the Dance of the Dragons, and the Master of Whispers is close to them as well. 
each of the Targaryen Hightower children are as different from one another as the next. Aegon is a womanizer with no interest in ruling. Helena is a dreamer and prefers the company of bugs and creepy crawlies. And Aemond is both studious and fierce, flying the largest dragon in the world. While Aegon and Helena are married, it is largely speculated that Helena's children may be fathered by Aemond, not Aegon. Bruh. The pair are much closer than Helena and Aegon, who she seems to despise, and one of the very few people she appears comfortable around is Aemond. I made a little video about it linked below if you want to learn more about this idea. Helena owns an impressive bug collection, and she also embroiders bugs while sewing, and the beetles are quite similar to the one that Larys uses as the emblem in his cane or the pins adorning his broken men at Harrenhal. And if you look very closely at Larys' cane, the firefly has a very tiny sapphire at the crown of its head, similar to the sapphire which Aemon used to replace his lost eye. It has been suspected that Larys has the ability to green sea, just as Bran Stark did in the A Song of Ice and Fire series and Game of Thrones. Going back to Harrenhal, which sits on the shores of the mysterious God's Eye and holds the Isle of Faces, a massive weirwood grove sacred to the children of the forest and guarded by the Order of Green Men who reside there. The Green Men are said to have green skin and antlers and ride on the backs of elk though maesters believe they simply wear green clothing and antlered crowns. The isle holds many secrets and is nearly impossible to reach due to strange winds or flocks of ravens who attack those who try to access the isle. Much like Bran, Laris has a disability, his club foot, which differentiates him from the other strong members of his family. It may not be white, no, Grace. He's a big lad. Harwin is called Breakbones, the strongest man in the realm, and even Lionel is recognized for his redoubtable and brutish size. Past members of their house include the young blonde bull, Sir Lucamore Strong, who was a knight of the Kingsguard under King Jaehaerys and Queen Alysanne, until he broke his vows by marrying not one, but three women, and fathering 16 children upon his wives. When his offenses were exposed, Lucamore was gelded and sent to the Wall, and his children given noble bastard names and sent to live at Storm's End, Driftmark, and Harrenhal. So the men of House Strong are large, fierce, and have a propensity for women, and spreading their seed by having many children. The seed is strong. Best to make your way through life unencumbered. If you ask me. However, Laris does not fulfill any of the characteristics that the other Strongs possess, which may make him a likely candidate to access Green Seer abilities. Much like Bran Stark, who has lost the use of his legs but has learned to see through the eyes of his direwolf and to fly, Laris seems to have the ability to see through the eyes of the rats in King's Landing. On many occasions, we see examples of this and find Laris has knowledge of secrets that he has no business knowing. Now, I know we're taking the long way around to discuss Alice Rivers, but just stick with me. We'll get there, I promise. First, we must weave the web. More than once it has proved advantageous to those willing to feed the weaver. This is what Maester Lewin tells Bran about the Children of the Forest and the Isle of Faces. Their gods were the gods of the forest, stream, and stone the old gods whose name are secret. Their wise men were called green seers and carved strange faces in the weirwoods to keep watch on the woods. How long the children reigned here or where they came from, no man can know. But some 12,000 years ago, the first... The children of the forest. But some 12,000 years ago, the first men appeared from the east, crossing the broken arm of Dorne before it was broken. They came with bronze swords and great leathern shields, riding horses. No horse had ever been seen on this side of the narrow sea. No doubt the children were as frightened of the horses as the first men were by the faces in the trees. As the first men carved out holdfasts and farms, they cut down the faces and gave them to the fire. Horror struck, the children went to war. 
The old songs say that the green seers use dark magics to make the seas rise and sweep away the land, shattering the arm, but it was too late to close the door. The wars went on until the earth ran red with the blood of men and children both, but more children than men, for men were bigger and stronger, and wood and stone and obsidian make a poor match for bronze. Finally, the wise of both races prevailed, and the chiefs and heroes of the first men met the green seers and wood dancers amidst the weirwood groves of a small island in a great lake called God's Eye. There they forged the pact. The first men were given the coastlines, the high plains and bright meadows, the mountains and bogs, but the deep woods were to remain forever the children's, and no more weirwoods were to be put to the axe anywhere in the realm. So the gods might bear witness to the signing, every tree on the island was given a face, and afterward the sacred order of green men was formed to keep watch over the Isle of Faces. The ghost of High Heart refers to Heron Hall as the Hall of Kings, and to her home under the sacred hollow hill, this place belongs to the old gods still. They linger here as I do, shrunken and feeble, but not yet dead, nor do they love the flames, for the oak recalls the acorn, the acorn dreams of the oak, and the stump lives in them both, and they remember when the first men came with fire in their fists. Arya frightens the ancient woman, who smells death reeking from her, and the ghost weeps for some time before vanishing into the night. And as morning comes, it begins to rain heavily, which seems to be a connection between the ghost of High Heart, who is seemingly a child of the forest, and her emotions affecting the weather. Similarly, as Mira Reed tells Bran Stark about the magical abilities of the Cranach men, who breathe mud and run on leaves and change earth to water and water to earth with just a whispered word, she tells a story of a young man who can speak to the trees, weave words, and make castles appear and disappear. But he wanted to learn even more from the green men on the Isle of Faces, and through many trials he made his way there, staying with the inhabitants of the island for an entire winter and learning their skills before departing for the tourney at Harrenhal in the year of the false spring. But that is a story for another day. And finally, Asha Greyjoy recalls a tale she heard as a child of the children of the forest fighting the first men where the green seers turned the trees into warriors. These examples are important because they offer information on the ways of the old gods and the children of the forest and how their unique magic would work in the world. We have seen many examples of magic connected to elements like fire in particular, but the green magic of the old gods has not been explained in a cohesive manner. There are crumbs sprinkled throughout the A Song of Ice and Fire series, but Fire and Blood, being a historical account of the Targaryen kings, does not include much in regards to the old ways and the magic which ruled the lands prior to Aegon's conquest. The castle of Harrenhal was built on the shores of the God's Eye, a monument to Black Heron's hubris. It took 40 years to build, costing the lives of countless slaves and exhausting the kingdom's resources. Heron the Black was ironborn and ruled over the Iron Islands and the Riverlands. The castle was a massive monument of stone, roofed with the timber of 3,000-year-old weirwoods, and is rumored to have blood mixed into the mortar, imbuing the castle with magic and curses. Heron and his sons moved into the castle the day Aegon began his conquest, and Heron's offense caused many houses in the Riverlands to join in support of the new Dragon King, including House Strong, the ancient and noble First Men family. Though Harrenhal is nigh impregnable, Aegon set upon Harrenhal from above with Dragonflame, astride his mount, Beleriand the Black Dread. Though stone does not easily burn, wood, food stores, and many other things within the castle walls did, and eventually the stone walls melted into twisted and misshapen spires, decrepit memories of their brief glory. Green is what is left when order fades, when... Passion dies when we die too. According to a leaked audition script of Alice Rivers in House of the Dragon, I've come to know the face of tortured rest well enough. Sleep can be so thin inside these walls. 
This place has been cursed since the first stone was laid. King Heron felled a grove of yew trees that grew in these lands. They say they are imbued with the spirits of those who lived long before he came. You can hear them. Whispers. Sometimes. The very bed you sleep in was made from such a tree. Experienced anything interesting? From the carved eyes of the weirwood trees on the nearby Isle of Faces, we can imagine Black Heron's castle to be an abomination. The most sacred isle on the entire continent had a massive stone castle built with an eye shot. The king who built it, who kept the drowned god anyway, was clear-cutting ancient weirwoods to make space for his new monument, but also using their sacred wood for lumber to build the thing. It went explicitly against everything that was agreed upon in the pact. Jojen explains, The singers of the forest had no books, no ink, no parchment, no written language. Instead, they had the trees, and the weirwoods above all. When they died, they went into the wood, into leaf and limb and root, and the trees remembered. All their songs and spells, their history and prayers, everything they knew about this world. Maesters will tell you that the weirwoods are sacred to the old gods. The singers believe they are the old gods. When singers die, they become part of that godhood. Long ago, your footprints were filled with grass. Moss shall cover your tombstone, and as the sun rises, green shall spread over all. Alice Rivers knows much and more. She sees visions in the storm clouds, in a mountain pool, and in the flames. And while she is often compared to Melisandre, I believe there are some distinct differences between the two branches of magic that these women practice, which prove that despite the rumors, Alice is not Melisandre under another glamour. The ghost of High Heart said it plainly enough. This place belongs to the old gods, and they do not love the flames. The old gods have no love for the flames because fire destroys all memory of their existence. Melisandre worships the Lord of Light and stares into the flames for her visions. Even the ghost of High Heart is visited by Thoros of Myr, a red priest with the ability to give the kiss of life many times, but still visits the old gods for visions of truth and news from around the realm. News very likely collected by the ravens in service to the old gods. He believes the weirwoods whisper into her ear while she sleeps. Melisandre and Thoros are both red priests who wear red clothing. In contrast, the old gods of the Isle of Faces are protected by green men. Green represents life, fertility, reincarnation and rebirth, nature and immortality. The other symbol of the green men, the hand, represents strength, power, and protection. And in symbology such as the Hamsa, it protects against the evil eye, something we have linked to another character in this story in another one of my videos. So the green hand is a symbol of protected reincarnation, just as the isle may be seen as a place linked to the life, death, and rebirth cycle in nature. The seed is strong on the Isle of Faces. Furthermore, stone preserves, and this may be why we see so many heart trees protected behind stone walls surrounding a god's wood, or growing through the center of the ancient castles of the First Men, such as the Night Fort or White Harbor. Petrified wood turns to stone, as do dead weirwood trees, so the connection between these elements becomes clear once you begin to look for the many, many times stone is mentioned throughout the text in close proximity to Weirwood. The stone at Harrenhal is said to be imbued with spells and curses, its mortar mixed with the blood of human sacrifices. A massive Weirwood with an angry face resides within the stone walls surrounding the godswood. The magic within the stones of Harrenhal may be subject to manipulation by someone who's very familiar with the place and possesses certain knowledge of the history of the castle. And by the end of the book, Fire and Blood, someone has indeed awoken the power in the stone walls of Harrenhal. We will be getting into spoiler territory here from the book, Fire and Blood, and predictions for the future of House of the Dragon. 
Alice Rivers is at the castle when Prince Damon Targaryen takes Hall at the beginning of the dance. And from the leaked audition tape of her character, we must assume that she and Damon encounter one another, but the nature of their meeting is unknown. However, once Damon learned that his nephew Aemond and Sir Kristen Cole had vacated King's Landing, making way for Harrenhal, he and his dragon Caraxes took flight toward the capital, as well as a murder of crows flying forth from the twisted towers of Harrenhal. Aemond and Sir Kristen reached the gates of Harrenhal only to find them open and Prince Damon gone. The castle was held by Sir Simon Strong, who welcomed the prince. Aemond and his men feasted as victors until they learned of the fall of King's Landing, which had been taken by Daemon and Rhaenyra in the absence of Aemond and his massive dragon, Vagar. Aemond's wrath was fearsome to behold, and he accused Sir Simon of being a traitor. He challenged him to a duel, which Aemond quickly dispatched and fed Sir Simon's corpse to Vagar. He then slaughtered anyone within the castle walls with strong blood in their veins, save for only one, Alice Rivers. Aemond was captivated by the wet nurse and took her to his bed as a prize of war. Though there were many younger women around the castle, Aemond preferred Alice to any of them. Everybody knows Aemond has a thing for older women. How you've grown. And while Aemond became more and more besotted with Alice, it is said that she used love potions and filters not only upon the prince, but Sir Kristen as well. The men, who had so often agreed, became increasingly contentious, eventually leading them to part ways for their individual fates. Sir Kristen departed for the south with their host, while Aemon decided to rain fire upon the Riverlands in hopes of luring out his foe. He left Alice behind as he brought dragon flame to several holdings, including Castle Derry, Lord Haraway's Town, Lord's Mill, Black Buckle, Buckle, Claypool, Swineford, and Spiderwood. However, in his absence, Lady Sabbath of Frey had taken Harrenhal, finding only Alice Rivers within the walls, who claimed she was pregnant with Aemon's child. She told Lady Frey, as she stood naked in the godswood with one hand upon her swollen belly, I have the dragon's bastard in me. I can feel his fires looking at my womb. Whilst we're off looking for bread, here comes Crane. Eventually, Aemon returned to Harrenhal after Vagar's flames reduced Old Willow and White Willow to ash and Hog Hall to blackened stone. Aemon burned every wooden structure within Harrenhal in a move reminiscent of his forefathers, Aegon the Conqueror and Magor the Cruel, and Lady Sabatha only survived the flames by hiding in a privy. However, her prized captive, Alice Rivers, had escaped with Prince Aemon on his dragon, leaving the lords of the Riverlands in constant fear of being the next holding claimed by Dragonflame. Aemon became the terror of the trident, and his lady Alice flew with him while growing swollen with child. We must imagine the vast tracts of land around Harrenhal that Aemond and Vagar had cleared with dragon flame, reducing the nearby castles and holdings to worthless, smoldering ruins. She's beautiful, she's rich, she's got huge tracts of land. On that note, I want to discuss some real-world mythology and the character who I believe Alice Rivers to be inspired by. I have discussed in several of my House of the Dragon videos that much of the framework being used in this series is based around Arthurian legend, such as the relationship with Alicent and Kristen, or the fight between Kristen and Sir Joffrey of Monmouth, uh, excuse me, Lonmouth, or Rhaenyra and her encounter with the boar and with the white stag. And the context of Alice and Laris also lies within this realm in the form of King Arthur's sister, Morgan Le Fay and his illegitimate son, Mordred. Morgan Le Fay is a sorceress and healer. She is a student of Merlin with knowledge of herb lore and history, and she is very beautiful, though she's also known as a seductress. Morgan's magic is earth-based. She is connected to the plants and animals, particularly ravens and serpents. Morgan is said to be a shapeshifter, taking the form of animals or even turning to stone, which of course connects her to her brother and the Sword of the Stone. 
Morgan lives in Avalon, which is the Isle of the Blessed or the Isle of Apples. It is a sacred hidden place where it is often said the Fae live behind the fog and veiled mists and mortals cannot easily find their way. Avalon is a sacred island where the priestesses of the goddess live in a ninefold sisterhood. Morgan is their leader, and the high priestess reenacts the rituals and ceremonies of the old gods, performing as the sovereignty goddess when a new stag king or king of the land is chosen, such as Arthur. This is a sex ritual in which the new king consummates his sacred charge with the priestess in the form of the goddess. This is the king's commitment or marriage to the land. We mean hanky-panky. And when you do the hanky-panky, you get the secret knowledge. <laughs> Brandon the Builder was taken to a secret location where he learned the language of the children of the forest. What happened in that cave? I'm sorry, don't expect me to restrain myself with elf sex jokes. It's not going to happen. When Arthur is mortally wounded in his final battle at Camlin, he is taken to Avalon for healing by his sister, Morgan. She keeps his body there, where it is believed that Arthur will rise again and return in the time of Britain's greatest need. Here we find that Morgan is also seen as a psychopomp, or death goddess, as she guides her brother's soul to the other world, which lies beyond the Vale of Avalon. There, nine sisters rule by a pleasing set of laws those who come to them from our country. She, who is first of them, is more skilled in the healing art and excels her sisters in the beauty of her person. Morgan is her name, and she has learned what useful properties all the herbs contain so that she can cure sick bodies. She also knows an art by which to change her shape and to cleave the air on new wings like Daedalus, and when she wishes, she is at breast, chatru, or pavia, and when she will, she slips down from the air and onto your shores. Mordred is the illegitimate son of Arthur, born after Arthur unknowingly sleeps with his sister in the king-making ceremony. Mordred is conceived when Arthur and Morgan perform the Stag King ritual, where neither of them realize they are brother and sister. It's complicated. Actually, I don't need to over-explain this. We're talking about House of the Dragon. What am I even saying? Incest is like a normal Tuesday over here. Hold on! Hold on! This is Hold on! Her sister was a witch! <laughs> Right? And what was her sister? A princess! The Wicked Witch of the East, bro! I'm gonna stab him. You're gonna look at me and you're gonna tell me that I'm wrong? Am I wrong? Anyway, Morgan is very ashamed when she learns the truth and hides Mordred away from Arthur for many years, allowing their sister, or aunt, Morgos, to raise him until he is grown to manhood. Once Arthur learns the truth, he hesitates in acknowledging Mordred as his son and heir, despite not having children with Guinevere. This leads to contention between the father and son, which eventually leads to the fatal battle between the men. Mordred is an interesting character himself because he is often painted as the villain or a schemer. The name Mordred was given to him by the Saxons, and it means evil counsel, for his clever mind and sharp tongue. His true name is Gwydion. Because he spent so much of his life in the company of women, he is able to divine information from them easily. For example, learning the truth of the affair between Guinevere and Lancelot and threatening to expose them. In some tales, Mordred receives a leg injury or is born with a club foot, which contributes to his villainous characterization and a conflation with the Fisher King. In other tales, he kidnaps Guinevere while Arthur is away on campaign, or alternatively, she runs away with Mordred while Arthur is gone, which often culminates in the final battle between father and son. It is endlessly fascinating to explore Mordred's morality in the light of his legitimacy, especially considering the questionable circumstances of Arthur's own conception, but we don't have to get into all of that today. Now, why is any of this relevant? Well, we mustn't forget that Arthur is the Pendragon, the High Dragon. This title is preserved only for those who earn it, much like the Sword of the Morning title for House Dane. The Pendragon is a king of the tribal kings of Britain. So we can find many parallels between Morgan Le Fay and Alice Rivers when we really start to look at the details. Both women are sorceresses or witches. Both women are illegitimate daughters. 
Both women are mothers of royal bastards with dragon blood. Both women are associated with sacred, hidden islands. Both women are ageless or carry a deathly aspect to them. And these are just a few examples of the similarities between Alice and Morgan. But let's keep going and reveal even more parallels between the Isle of Faces when comparing it to Avalon. On the Isle of Faces, the Weirwoods each have a face. We know the singers believe their souls enter the trees when they die and they become part of that godhood. The green men are dedicated protectors of the island, representing the reincarnation cycle, which may indicate that their souls or consciousness are housed within the trees as well. The green men also wear antlered headdresses, which connects them to Kernunos, the horned god, who is a psychopomp, delivering souls of the dead to the other world in Celtic mythology. The Isle of Avalon is a doorway to the other world where souls pass through in the afterlife. Morgan keeps Arthur's body in Avalon to return as Britain's defender in the time of her greatest need. Morgan herself represents the sovereignty goddess of Britain, where she, as a priestess of Avalon, performed the sacred ritual binding herself and her brother, the Stag King, to the land as her defender. The green is the color of earth, of living things, of life. And of rot. Yes. We can see that Alice is meant to represent the same thing for the Isle of Faces. Alice Rivers is a priestess of the Isle of Faces, a green priestess and representative of the Mother Goddess. We can see these qualities in her ability to nourish the children of Hall with her ample breast milk. Stop drinking normal milk! Are you a, are you a criminal? Or how she's only able to conceive a child with a dragon lord, a pen dragon, in essence. However, does this necessarily mean that the child belongs to Aemond, or could he perhaps belong to Daemon instead? I don't think it is out of the question to suspect Daemon may be the father of Alice's child, considering the nature of their conversation in the audition script, or the overall outcome of the battle between Daemon and Aemond. An eye for an eye, and a son for a son. These two just won't stop. When uncle and nephew meet for their final battle, Damon had been waiting at Heron Hall for 14 days, cutting a slash in the heart tree each of the 13 nights, which still bleeds fresh every spring. Amond dropped Alice off at Kingspire Tower, her belly swollen with child, and the men met in the skies above the god's eye on Dragonback. However, skill and experience overpowered the younger warrior, and Damon leapt from Caraxes onto Vagar and drove Dark Sister through the one eye of Aemon Targaryen. The blood of kings, dragons, and Valyrian steel sank beneath the waters of the lake, and though Caraxes crawled onto the shores outside of Harrenhal to expire, Vagar's black blood boiled and steamed in the waters of the god's eye. Aemon's body was later found, still chained to his dragon, with the Valyrian steel sword Dark Sister lodged through his skull, but Damon Targaryen was never found. Alice Rivers watched from above on King's Pyre Tower, and we can imagine the god's eye boiling with dragon blood and king's blood, magical relics and swords, and it had to look like one giant cauldron. Double, double, toil and trouble. Alice probably loved every second of it. Now we must keep in mind that Alice basically had Aemon to do all of her heavy lifting. She had many of the nearby holdings effectively raised to the ground with Vagar's fires, and with the Targaryen princes out of her way, she ruled as the Witch Queen of Harrenhal and took control of the castle and lands all around her. Men feared her after an encounter with Sir Regis Groves and his host of men, who were assigned with ousting her from the castle, and failed. Once Alice claimed Harrenhal for herself, the new Hand of the King, Lord Tyland Lannister, sent men to reclaim the castle for the crown. He sent one of the newest members of the King's Guard, Sir Regis Groves, who gathered a group of seasoned men from nearby Castle Derry, and with only 100 men, set forth to reclaim Harrenhal from the sorceress who ruled there. However, only 32 men returned with their lives. The, the gates of Harrenhal were closed, with armed men upon the battlements. 
So Regis demanded to speak to their lord, but it was Alice Rivers who emerged with a young boy at her side. She claimed the boy was Eamon's true-born son and heir to the realm, commanding him to kneel before the king. Sir Regis refused, and what happened next remains a mystery. Some claimed Alice merely raised a hand and Sir Regis began to scream, clutching his head until his skull burst apart. Sir Regis was killed instantly as the gates of Harrenhal burst open and a swarm of howling riders charged out from the haunted ruin in service of the Witch Queen. The survivors fled in fear back to Derry. The following day, one more man reached the castle, saying the Witch Queen had released him with a message, but no man could laugh at what he had to say. Once all of the men had promised not to laugh, he relayed to them that no man should approach Harrenhal unless they meant to bend the knee. The Witch Queen had woken a power in those stones, and she had a dragon behind the castle walls. He'd seen it. One man in the crowd chuckled at this, and the messenger suddenly began to choke, as though he were being strangled by an invisible hand until he died. Was this the work of poison or something more magical and sinister? This verdict we will overtake your sword, send your coins, send your battlements, and try as you might, all you hold dear will succumb to it. Morgan Le Fay once cursed a vast forest, calling it the Vale Perilous. Any man who entered there who had not been faithful in love was cursed to remain there. She offered a series of tests for the men to escape, including facing two dragons, but no man made it out, that is, until Lancelot was entrapped there, and his purity and love with Guinevere provided his opportunity to escape. Morgan kept these men effectively as sex slaves in some interpretations, her own personal seed vault for all intents and purposes. Has Alice effectively created her own Veil Perilous as well? Men feared her. They feared going near Harrenhal and its surrounding lands. Her power reached beyond the walls of Harrenhal, which she proved when the men laughed at her messenger. Alice had a host of men 600 strong behind the walls of Harrenhal who served the Witch Queen loyally. Fire and blood call them lawless and broken men, and we must ask ourselves, are these the same men who her brother Laris had sent to Harrenhal, who killed their brother and their father, and hid themselves away in the darkest corners of the castle. Are Alice and Laris working together? Laris is an enigma, and scholars have pondered his choices in the Dance of the Dragons for generations. His aim was unclear, and he seemed to serve both sides. The question arises, which queen did Laris serve? Oh no, which queen is whom Laris serves? Laris is an agent of chaos. His indeterminate actions are meant to leave more questions than answers because the answers have not been exposed to us as of yet. His decisions throughout the Dance of the Dragons begin to make more sense when we find where his loyalty truly lies. Both Alice and Laris were the outcasts of their family, but each had extraordinary skills of their own. Laris's dedication to Queen Alicent is truly exploitative, a means to climb the ladder of chaos which occurs at his behest. He is the weaver and the puppet master, an agent of chaos which only benefits his sister, who he views as the true Green Queen. Queen makes her wish. What servant of the realm would not strive to fulfill it? However, Laris, who we suspect is a green seer, may already be wed to the Weirwoods, and his death may be to him as a leaf falls from a tree. Alice Rivers is still alive at the end of Fire and Blood, outlasting her entire bloodline, save for the young Targaryen bastard at her side, whom she calls the rightful King of Westeros. Looking to the future, the castle of Harrenhal was not granted to another lord for 20 years after the death of Sir Simon Strong. So Alice held the castle from 131 AC to, well, we don't exactly know when. Lord Lucas Lothston was named as the next Lord of Harrenhal in 151 AC, but the 20 years in between are still a mystery. We do not know the exact magic behind the Weirwood Trees and the Isle of Faces and their power of reincarnation, but we have plenty of clues to speculate and draw some fairly solid conclusions. How strong is a noble family from the Riverlands? A noble house without a house. 
However, those who live close to the green, as Mira said, access green magic much more easily. They can make castles appear and disappear with a whispered word. House Strong revealed their modified sigil for House of the Dragon, which includes the symbol of the green men, a green hand on a white field. The green men on the Isle of Faces come from House Strong. The Weirwoods drink blood or absorb blood sacrifices, which the first men adhered to. The pact which was created seems very likely to have been a giant ritualistic sacrifice of men and children of the forest, sacrificing themselves to the trees so the old gods would witness, by the massive offering of blood to the earth and trees. It's a good way to get the gods' attention. Very likely how strong has a stronghold or castle on the Isle of Faces, or they may not even need one since their spirits are wed to the trees. Are the living strongs like Harwin and Laris simply walking avatars for their green seer spirits from the trees? Probably not. But clearly, the seed is strong, and it seems as though the consummation of the relationship between Rhaenyra and Harwin was predestined based around this ritual and marriage of the sovereign green man of the land and the dragon queen. When Rhaenyra encountered the white stag, it was a powerful moment for her and the kingdom. As King Viserys' royal hunter explained, Before the dragons rolled over Westeros, White Heart was the symbol of royalty in these lands. Viserys was unable to hunt down the white stag, but the king of the forest presented himself willingly to the rightful queen. Rhaenyra herself was recognized as a sovereignty goddess, accepted by the land and the animals. So her relationship with Harwin, as a horned green man, fits perfectly with this idea. Harwin fulfills her sacred marriage to the land with his own role in the ceremony, and his death was not in vain, but perfectly complements the reincarnation cycle of House Strong and the horned green man connection. Live, spread seed, die. Repeat. Alice, as a green high priestess, may have seen Aemond or Daemon as the male counterpart to Rhaenyra in this sacred marriage. Though Aemond's body was later found, Damon's was not. His dragon Caraxes was able to reach the shore outside the walls of Harrenhal, but he expired there, the earth drinking the last of his magical blood. Where did Damon's body end up? Did he make it to the Isle of Faces, clinging to life? Or, just as King Arthur remains in Avalon to return in the time of Britain's greatest need, did Damon wed the trees on the Isle of Faces to become a green man or something else entirely? Daemon is very educated in the history of the Valerians and the Targaryens' connection to their dragons. He and his late wife Lena had made incredible journeys throughout Essos on Dragonback to learn the ancient secrets of their ancestors and are even rumored to have visited the smoking ruins of Valyria. However, despite all of his street smarts, he knew absolutely nothing about Aegon's prophecy and when Rhaenyra told him, he was enraged. Though he believes dragons are the power that made them kings, he also realizes there are still things he must learn. Guaranteed, the idea of the prophecy eats away at him, and he doesn't even know the details of it yet. However, the children of the forest and the old gods hold the history of the first long night, which very likely means they know everything about the Song of Ice and Fire. So I believe that Alice Rivers holds some valuable information that Damon may desire to learn more about, and Alice may find that Damon is the worthy once and future king who carries ancient dragon wisdom that would be a fantastic addition to the Weirwood Super Information Highway and a safe place to store that wisdom for the time of Westeros' greatest need. Like, perhaps, when a lost and orphaned Targaryen princess awakens three dragon eggs after, like, 150 years of no dragons in the world, but she has no information on ancient dragon wisdom and she is the savior of the long night. Yeah, Uncle Damon would be an excellent resource. Now, of course, Alice and Aemond are the canonical lovers in this story, but it seems far more likely to me that Alice was using Aemond to clean house around her and make it possible for her to be the last woman standing in Harrenhal. He may or may not be the father of her child, or it might be Damon, just saying, but it seems very likely that for once, the Maesters and Septons were correct in saying that Alice had used potions and filters on Aemon to bind him to her will. 
Morgan Le Fay used a glamour to entice Lancelot to Elaine, who was a prophetic maiden who desired the knight, and Melisandre used a glamour to disguise herself as a seductive red priestess from a 400-year-old woman, and it seems very likely Alice Rivers will do the same. I am certainly not the only person to point out that Gail Rankin, who plays Alice in House of the Dragon, looks extraordinarily similar to another character in this show, Helena Targaryen, played by Fia Saban. Casting these two women is certainly remarkable because Alice is said to be around 40 years old with long black hair, while Helena is a Targaryen princess with the looks to match, silver blonde hair and purple eyes. I believe that Alice will use a glamour to appear more like Helena to Aemond and seduce him under the skies. As we discussed earlier, Laris uses a personal firefly sigil, and Helena collects beetles and bugs. The details in Laris's cane seem to hint that he is spying on the Targaryen Hightower children, and the useful knowledge of Aemond and Helena's hidden romance would be a very effective tool to use against the prince when he takes over Harrenhal and murders everyone with strong blood in the castle. Aemond was an effective ally for Alice in clearing the nearby holdings and making it more and more difficult for adversaries to approach or overtake Harrenhal. Aemond and Daemon are so much alike and share some incredible traits, but Daemon ultimately carries a wealth of knowledge which would prove far more valuable to the survival of the realm and the children of the forest than to simply allow him to extinguish. Damon and Rhaenyra are cosmically interwoven, like twins separated at birth, or two parts of one person. If Rhaenyra is the sovereign dragon queen, Damon is her counterpart in this as well, and Alice is the green priestess to initiate him. Red is the color of lust, but green is what lust leaves behind. The deaths of Damon and Aemon close one major chapter in Harrenhal. However, Alice, the Witch Queen, reigns over the stones with her son, and her story is still very much unfinished, until we receive the next part of Fire and Blood. Alice Rivers is sure to captivate us in House of the Dragon, just as she does in Fire and Blood, and I, for one, cannot wait to see what sort of chaos ensues under her reign as the Witch Queen of Harrenhal. I know this was an incredibly long video, so if you are still watching, you're amazing! I have even more thoughts about Alice Rivers and the priestesses of the Green Isle, but honestly they go pretty deep on the symbolism, so we'll save that for another time. However, I believe these women hold a lot of power over the land, and that is the reason why they are so disregarded in the historical records of the Maesters and Septons. I definitely discovered some major connections with Alice Rivers and Harrenhal to Arya Stark's time spent in Harrenhal, where she called herself Nan. Old Nan being a parallel to the Children of the Forest. There are also connections between the Isle of Faces and the Faceless Men, so, in my opinion, I believe Arya's future may mirror the ultimate fate of Alice Rivers. But those are just my thoughts, so let me know yours in the comments below. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! And try as you might, all you hold dear will succumb to it. Your skin. Your bones. Your virtue.